on to some breaking news just coming in. Ahead of the second phase of polling in India, the Election Commission has banned the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and the BSP Chief Mayawati from election campaigning starting 6 a.m. tomorrow. Yogi Adityanath cannot campaign for a period of three days, while Mayawati cannot campaign for a period of 48 hours. That's two days. Let's get in further details now from our political editor, Kartike Sharma, who's joining us on the broadcast. First up, what is the latest? What else has the Election Commission said while declaring that order? And uh, this is a setback indeed for the two respective parties. Well, obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a big setback. It's a setback for both uh, BSP and uh, 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 Bharati Janta Party. It's an embarrassment that uh, the sitting chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, the biggest state, will not be campaigning for next 48 hours. Mayawati will not be campaigning for next uh, uh, 48 hours. Yogi Adityanath will not be campaigning for 72 hours. Both of them will have to stay away from their social media accounts. They will not be tweeting. They will not be writing any blog on Facebook. They will not be using any of the social media platform which can be part and parcel of the electoral cycle. So I think after a lot of criticism which uh, which election commission uh, went through in past week that uh, civil society actors were saying that the EC has no teeth, a lot of people are uh, using blatant communal language, casteist language, personally attacking each other, um, a language which is, which is uh, not only abusive but you know, completely robs election of its dignity and it's happening right under EC's nose. So I think from past four or five days, I think EC reacted to it. They took an action on Namo TV. Now they have ta uh, taken action on Mayavati. They have ta taken action on Yogi Adityanath. There's still a public demand because there's an outrage that action against Azam Khan needs to be taken the way he has spoken in a very derogatory way against uh, Jaya Prada, uh, uh, the candidate fielded from Rampur by Bharti Janata Party. So I think it's, it's good that, uh, you know, EC will be taken seriously. Last time around it happened was in 1990s when the sitting governor of Himachal Pradesh had to resign because he issued a political statement. Right now we do not know as to what action against Kalyan Singh will be taken. EC has already taken that into cognizance. But, you know, ultimately, you know, if EC takes an action, it restores hope in democracy, it restores hope in electoral democracy, it restores hope in the process that our elections are f free and fair, and EC is doing the job which it should be doing. Right, and uh, a crucial time, of course, for campaigning. And uh, uh, this is a strong message coming in, as you just mentioned, from the Election Commission. Not for the first time, of course, that uh, such a ban has been put in place. But uh, help our viewers better understand uh, whether or not this will actually result in uh, parties uh, adhering to the guideline that has been issued by the Election Commission. Because let's uh, face it, uh, objectionable statements and the kind of remarks that have been made by these leaders uh, have been a part and parcel of campaigning uh, for leaders cutting across party lines. I think this decision has sent shockwaves. You know, 72 hours is more than two days. 42, 48 hours is two days. You know, 72 hours is roughly three days. So, you know, for principles of a regional uh, party like BSP or Yogi Adityanath, who happens to be the chief minister, not to campaign for three and two days, it's a big setback for them. Imagine if they would have said for one week, both of them will not campaign. It would have directly impacted the, uh, you know, the fortunes of Bahujan Samajwadi party. Even Yogi Adityanath not campaigning, you know, would have, uh, would have defeated the purpose of aggressive campaigning of Bharti Janata party. So I think people, political parties will take note of the fact that EC is not a toothless tiger. You know, the whole image of EC was that it's a toothless tiger. You can get away by anything. You know, you will be uh, given a censure, but nothing tangible will happen to you. What EC has shown is that they can take tangible action against politicians. And I think that's where the story is. All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Kartike, thanks very much for helping our viewers better understand what the Election Commission has said while issuing that uh, ban. Now, there is trouble also brewing for Rahul Gandhi. The Indian Supreme Court has accused the Congress president of misquoting the court or uh, misquoting the court's uh, order on the uh, or guidelines and observations on the Rafale deal. The court has given Rahul Gandhi a week's time now to explain why he attributed uh, the comments on Prime Minister Modi to the Indian Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, and I'm quoting, we make it clear that the statement attributed to this court in the address uh, made by the respondent to the media and public has been incorrectly attributed. We make it clear that the court never made such an observation. We only decided on the admissibility of documents. The court, of course, was referring uh, to the arguments uh, taking place in the Rafale case. In an apparent reference to the Indian Prime Minister, the Congress President had said that the Supreme Court had found that 
the chokidar is a quote unquote chore or thief rahul gandhi was referring to the supreme court ruling on the admissibility of leaked documents in the rafal review case the bjp had accused rahul gandhi of misquoting the supreme court bjp's minakshi lekhi has even sued the congress president for contempt of court rahul gandhi has to file a response on or before the 22nd of april